So um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit here, uh, talking more about uh, information management. So I came to the museum, uh, was interested in fish for a long time, but I've really kind of drifted away from that, um, more into uh, taxonomic information, but also the, the, the management of information uh, as a role here. It's a huge role. As people like Chris with the Morea Bio Project and, and everybody in this museum is dreading an amazing amount of information. How do we deal with that from a scientific perspective? How do we apply scientific principles to managing it? And how do we move forward with, you know, as, as we generate more data, how do we, how do we work with it? Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And I will figure out a Mac before I leave. Um, so really, the, qu the problem is that, that museum data are extremely diverse. And right now we have data in multiple places, multiple systems. Uh, people have them on hard drives, they have them in databases, they have them all over the place. So they're fragmented. And when we want to share data and we want to share information, it gets very difficult. So even across uh, you know, systems, you may or may not be able to share data across colleagues or across uh, disciplines or even you know, between museums or, or different initiatives that we might get involved with, it's very hard to share data. Well, there are some possible solutions that, that my group is trying to bring to this. Um, one of which we use, uh, uh, which I won't be talking about today, is really integrating systems. So you end up with systems information where you actually spend a lot of time on the hardware, the software, trying to get things to talk to each other so that you have an information flow and you can manage information. It's actually a very difficult thing to do and it's, it takes a heck of a lot of, of effort up front to make it work well. Another way to do it is actually to just aggregate the data to actually make use of the data. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Um, so one of the things I'm going to talk about is called semantic web technologies. Uh, semantics basically is a way of structuring data so that it actually makes sense to itself and to every other bit of data. data. Um, it's really known as really machine readable data. So machines can understand data that's structured in a semantic way as opposed to just the typical way that we might put data out there. Uh, an example would be, uh, it, it has something called a, a, a triple, a semantic triple. Um, an example I'm using there is just think about, it has a, uh, a subject, uh, a predicate, and an object. In this case, uh, Virginia is part of, of the USA. So if you think about things that way, you can actually, data itself speaks for itself, and that's really important. Then we can then apply and publish and expose that data in a way that it can be reused. And that's really important. As we generate a lot of data, we want people to make use of it. And there's a lot of initiatives around the world to really push this up. You may have heard of linked data or open linked data. Who's heard of that? I don't know. Maybe you have or haven't. But those are initiatives around the web. Things like uh, Facebook and all these real big technologies you hear about are really taking advantage of this. So the idea to link data has become very important. Um, so I'm going to briefly talk about two projects that I have. Uh, with colleagues in the, in the museum, really. Uh, one is Messenger. This is something we're, we're building uh, locally, which is to take information from really de dis desperate systems around the museum. That would include, and I didn't believe it, but this is the second talk about emus here. So uh, we, we actually, uh, we have the, our database collection system, emu. We're, we're dealing with the biorepository information and potentially the laboratory information systems that we have. And I'm, when I talk about museum data, just for my examples, I'm sticking with biological data. Since I'm a biologist, I know that best. I know there's much more than biological data in this museum, but for, for the nature of this talk, that's what I'm going to stick to. Um, so really, we're talking about linking data ac across systems using semantic, semantic technology. So to just illustrate this a little bit, we have really multiple databases. Now, we, we do some actual physical integration between them, but then what we're doing is taking the data, using globally unique identifiers to actually to mark the data set, we know it's unique, and then to aggregate that in another layer that then we can work with. If we try to aggregate at this level, imagine the barriers that happen in between these systems and the fact the systems themselves have intrinsic value for whatever you're doing, you can't really integrate in a way that every system is going to have the same ability as individual systems. So think of it as modulized systems are very important, but the data that comes out we can aggregate, oops, without blinding anybody, with semantic ways. We can then filter that data because obviously we have data that people, we don't want people to work with or see or we want to protect, and then work with initiatives. Um, and it's a very important concept in a way to move data around. 
Thank you. Uh, another big thing which uh, I have with actually Chris Meyer and Jonathan Coddington is an NSF grant. We're looking at uh, dealing with this at a, a, a museum-wide level. So as we imagine you have a specimen that's registered, you have a part that's in uh, the British Museum, you have one that's in the Field Museum, and you have one that's here, and they're all really part of the same collection event, the same, maybe the same specimen. We, we would be interested in how information between those systems is shared. So if I change something about it, those other, machine, other museums might want to know. So really a, a publication of subscription type service using semantic technology. So it's called Bicycle. We're bringing the message to Bicycle. It then uses this thing called a triplifier, which automates the tripling process. It builds what's called a large semantic store. To, it's kind of like a database joint, if anybody knows databases, but, but to actually get to that information. And then we can use it to run applications. So this is a really quick example. I want to look up a tuna. I can find out based on the, uh, the services that are out there that it is, you know, it has more than one name, but then we can link that to different observations and we get a, 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 a basically a graph or a grid of that information. So in, in, in closing, I just want to say that these technologies allow us to really uh, work with information and to expose information to infer it uh, to make infer relationships and implied relationships. Is this, I have a question, is, it, is that the model that you're building for this museum, is that a model that can be duplicated for other places? Uh, internally, it really has to deal with our real internal setup, yes. I mean, other museums have their own problems, and this is really to solve our problems so that we can play with other museums. They are all going to have to deal with their own issues because they have different types of databases, but if you use the same <coughs> technology, yes. But it's, it's really specific to what database you have in, in a way.